Good morning, gang. Happy Sunday morning. So here it is. Sun's maybe starting to come up. So that's six o'clock. I'm late. <laughs> no. Uh, we're coming up to the first day of summer. Okay, June 21st. And for me, that's a particular date that is important as a prepper. Why? You know, who knows? But I'll give I'll give you this. And this is this is why. The biggest thing that I see with preppers is a false sense of security. Oh, I have it. It's all set. Have you trained with it? Oh yeah, you know, I know how to use it. Okay, that's cool. All right, you know, I, I certainly don't want anybody to be like, you know, people who have Gee, I have a whole bunch of stuff. It's still in the Walmart packaging, and I've never even used it. You've probably seen videos like that. I know I have. You know, it's like, how to cook outside. Here's the stuff I have. Okay, no, you have no idea how to cook outside. You haven't even taken the stuff out of the package. But that's beside the point. How to use your stuff certainly is important. How to maintain it is something that a lot of people don't do. And... It's common in life, all right? You see this, you know, there's there's industries that exist because people are lazy. You know, you change the oil in your car every 3,000 to 5,000 miles, unless you use synthetic, and I, yeah, I know the story. Okay, but 3,000 to 5,000 miles, thereabouts, okay? You do that maintenance. You take it into the shop. You have them check the radiator. You have them check the windshield wipers and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, to make sure the car's in good running order so you don't break down on the side of the road. People don't do that with their preps. And it's very important because by the time it comes when you need to use them, you aren't going to be able to replace them. <laughs> That's it, Okay. Most of it, at least. Let's put it this way. I mean, if we have, you know, a minor event, sure. You know, if something happens and uh, the power goes out for a couple hours, hey, you've got flashlights or whatever, and if the flashlights don't work, you're screwed for those couple hours, but the next day you go out to the store and you buy a new flashlight. My point is, why didn't you do this before, Okay. Everything needs to be maintained. Everything should be checked on periodically. For me, it is the first day of summer and the first day of winter. Why? Temperature ex uh, extremes change, okay? You know, I need different things in the summer than I need in the winter. That's my personal opinion. I'm not telling everybody to do what I do. Never have been. There's not a one-size-fits-all solution. You know that, okay? I want you to watch something real quick. This is our friend Constantine who sent me a video overnight. Yes, we don't have electricity, right? No big deal, because I have a huge generator and I'm like, I'm just gonna turn it on. And I come and I try to turn it on and guess what? It doesn't. The battery dead, I, I said, I think battery died because I haven't changed it in like 15 years or perhaps something else with it. Now, let me show you the generator and what the heck is happening. That's my yard. So it's right inside. It's a real large um, you know, install generator with an exhaust pipe, so it doesn't make much sound, you know, the silencer. There's a automatic control panel right here, it shows everything. And this is the generator itself. Uh, it's, I think it's South, South Korea, GSAN. Oh, Zaragoza, no, that's Spanish. And that's 11 kV, that's huge, huge. I mean, that thing is a beast, right? So I'm thinking, I'm all set, I'm all set, I'm just gonna, well, you know what? It's built this way that I gotta have, uh, well, I don't even have to turn it on, okay? I just, when the power supply is off, it turns on automatically because of that control system. 
So, and I couldn't start it yesterday. I tried, and I tried, and I tried, you know, and it's dead. And I think it's the bad thing. Now, not picking on him whatsoever or anything of the sort, uh, but it's a real life situation of somebody who just went through a very minor SHDF. I mean, a couple hour power outage is no big deal, but he learned, oh crap, I've got to go maintain this generator. Now, you saw the picture of the generator. This is a good size generator. I'd compare it to something like a Generac that people have here. Difference being is, from my knowledge of those people that have Generacs, is they automatically test themselves once a month, you know, for run to power for a minute or something like that to make sure they work. Obviously, this is a different system. To me, it looks like it probably runs on gas or runs on diesel or something like that. I mean, exhaust pipe and muffler and everything like that, you know, you don't, uh, as big. But maintaining the equipment that you have is crucial because what's the point of having it if when you need it it doesn't work i've said this i said this around uh the beginning of winter have you run your generator have you changed the oil in it okay the gas is in, is in there how you know have you got stable in it or whatever gas only lasts for so long it starts to get gummy you got to run that out you got to change it whatever it would be okay just saying, on a generator. But how about even if you don't have a gas generator? How about some of the other things? Have you checked your solar generators to make sure that they're still charged up? Okay, Some of them will hold a charge almost indefinitely. Some will drain slowly over time. Charge them up. Okay, But let's look at some other stuff. Common prepper tools. The aforementioned flashlight. Please tell me you don't store your batteries in your flashlight. The batteries will corrode. They will ruin your flashlight. If you, if you don't use the thing, go open up one of your flashlights, and if you see all that rusty carbon crap, throw the flashlight out and go get a new one. Okay? But drop a couple of batteries in it. Make sure it still works. Make sure the bulb didn't break or it got wet or something. Check it. How about your first aid kit? Go through all your medical supplies and see what's expired. Okay, some, thing, some things do expire. They lose their efficacy. Uh, potassium iodide pills, they're something that expires. You know, make sure that you're replacing those as need be. Your fire extinguisher, okay? Hopefully you've got one, if not multiple ones, in your house. Check them. They expire too, Okay. You can always take them to the fire department if they need to be recharged or whatever, and they'll recharge them for you. Okay, don't know what it costs. Uh, how about little things like your, your hand tools and stuff? You know, your emergency can opener. Most people have the electric can opener that they use in the kitchen or whatever, uh, and they really never give thought to the little hand one. I've got hand ones we use. They break, guys. Even the good ones break, Okay. Have a couple of them. Make sure they're not rusted, whatever it would be. How about your firearms? Have you cleaned and oiled them lately? Okay. They sit in your gun safe. They sit like mine sit on a rack on the wall or whatever it would be. They get dusty. Okay. Dust is the enemy to, dust and dirt is the enemy to a firearm. Go through and clean them. Re-oil them. Because... When the bad guy breaks into the house, <laughs> hang on a second. Let me put some oil into my into my pistol, my rifle, whatever. It's not working. That's not going to happen. All right. Just ideas, but maintenance of your equipment is critical because it doesn't matter if you have it if it doesn't work. Now. Constantine hoping he just needs a new battery. If, if that's all it is, cool, okay? Here's the catch. In an SHTF situation where he might be running that generator all the time, because as he told me earlier in the video, Russia rarely has power outages, okay? Apparently they have a better grid than we do. Uh, 
but if he needs that when the power goes out all the time, I mean, think of World War II, all right? You know, the Nazis storming into Russia. Chances are they didn't have power, you know, whatever it would be. There isn't going to be a store to go buy a new battery. And I don't care how good of a DIYer you are, I really doubt you have the ability to go make a battery. <laughs> so, you know, there's something right there. If his battery's 15 years old, it's probably time to replace it. Okay? I mean, car battery, you know, that I use for the car, usually five years, and that's about it. I mean, you're done. So what I'm saying, guys, is this. Set, like I talked about yesterday, set yourself a schedule. You change the smoke detectors in your house. You know, what is it, uh, FEMA or whoever the hell, you know, advises when we change the clocks, change the batteries in your fire or fire smoke detectors. Have a set schedule to check check your preps. Like I said, my personal is beginning of summer, beginning of winter, because there's different preps you need in summer and winter. Okay, but have something. Go out and check the stuff to make sure it works. Because you'd rather find out now than find out later. Pinball out.